So today, I'm really excited to show you guys, we're actually gonna be installing a Halo View RD7 backup camera system. Um, we forgot to actually put a camera system in prior to putting all the ceiling up in our bus, and this is an option that we can install afterwards. It's Bluetooth, and it's made for up to 80 foot RV or you know fifth wheel lengths and reach, so it's great options for a lot of people. So just a few of the basic parts that come with the backup rear view camera system. You have the screen, this is a seven inch screen, part of the RD7. We have a wireless transmitter, and that's gonna transmit from our camera to our screen. We have a standard DC car jack that powers the screen, and we're gonna modify this to actually tie it into existing wiring. We're actually gonna cut this. But if you don't, if you have a standard car jack, just plug it in. It's got the on-off button in the back, on-off switch, so you can power your screen on and off whenever. It has a standard Allen wrench that comes with it. It has a few mounting materials as well. And you have the camera, and this is the camera, the rear view camera that will go on the back. And then you, you just have basic parts that come with overall mounting your screen, mounting your camera to the bus. Well, to any vehicle that you decide to put it in. Today I'm going to show you how to install the monitor as well as the camera to existing DC wiring that was already in our bus that we converted. Um, we don't use the wiring anymore so I'm going to repurpose that wiring so that I can utilize switches and wires already in the system. I've separated out what I need for the monitor. Now we're going to install the monitor first and the reason for that is because we have to pair the camera to the monitor prior to installing the camera. So we're going to get this in, plugged in, um, and tied into our existing system. And we're going to power it up and then pair the camera. Now, there's pretty basic parts that come with the actual monitor part, the installation. You have your standard cable that goes to your um, car jack cigarette lighter. You have the adapter cable that actually comes from the cigarette lighter and plugs into your monitor. And then you have your antenna. Now, there's a couple other cables that you're going to need to pair it, but we'll get into those after we actually get the power to the monitor and make sure everything turns on. So I advise against this if you just want to be simple and put it into a carport. We don't want to get the adapter. We have an AC plug up front, which I'll show you shortly, that we could get a carport adapter and just plug this right into it. So we're going to just use our tool here and we're going to pull this apart a little bit. I'm just going to peel back the wire sheathing um, that goes around the actual wires we want to get to. So. You can see here, if you have you have a you know your standard positive and negative, or you know if for DC cable, we're going to cut this so that we can tie this into some wiring that, when we turn on the bus, it'll automatically turn on. Set this aside in case we need to use it again. I'm going to pull back the sheathing quite a bit on this, and then for these smaller wires, we're just going to go ahead and strip them. Now that we have these stripped, we have a pretty good amount. We might need some more, but for now, I'll just leave it like that. Um, we may want to give us ourselves a little bit more playroom, um, but I'm just testing this out right now. So, you know, you want to actually, you know, twist them in your hand, get a nice single, try to get a single thread so you can basically thread a needle, and you'll see why shortly. But I'm just going to go ahead and get these just prepared before we go and open up the front dash in our bus. You're going to need a multimeter. Um, you know standard multimeter use you can look up YouTube videos on how to use these But we're going to show you just you know confirming that we are going to be connecting to the right wires uh, for the system So here you'll see I've already taken the switchboard off That's all I did and I just took that out a lot of these switches we've abandoned since we re uh, We converted our bus into a schoolie and so we still have power to these switches But they're actually not powering anything down the line so what I'm gonna do is utilize one of these switches, or and I'm not gonna actually put it on a switch, we're just gonna utilize the power going to the switch. And I'm going to tie in our monitor to a positive and negative on a circuit that's already in our bus. It doesn't matter which one, as long as it has 12 volt power. So we're going to turn on our multimeter to DC, 20 volt readings, and we're going to test a few. And now I know which ones these are because I've tested it a couple times. But 
Uh, you'll take your positive and negative, and you're actually going to try it. And I'm going to put my positive cable on what I believe is to be the incoming power. And you're going to have to test these if you are tying it into a circuit. Then I'm going to put my negative on the negative part. And we're going to test. As you see, I'm at 12.13 volts, so 12 volt system. Now if I reverse this, you'll see that I actually am in reverse polarity, and that's just taking my red and my black and switching it. You'll see negative 12, so now you're in reverse polarity. So that's how you're going to tell. Now that I know which one it is, I'm going to turn off my power, and I'm going to splice these cables, and I'm going to tie in the monitor to these cables, and then we're going to power it on again and see if the monitor works. Here is our incoming positive wire. We're going to actually take this a little farther back just so I have a little bit to play with. And we're going to, just like we did with these, we're going to pull the wire apart and we're going to open up and expose the wire inside and take the sheathing off. Now, we're not going to break or cut the wire. We're just going to tie into the wire. So I'm going to pull the sheathing back and expose the internal components um, of the wiring, and that's the copper here. Now, the next step is I'm going to tie in what I stripped earlier from the power supply cable that came with our system. I'm going to tie in our positive and negative to this as well. So, we know that red is going to be positive, black is negative, it's pretty standard. So, we're going to come in here and open up. I'm just going to get anything with a point. I'm actually going to use one of my multimeter points. We're going to just open up a little hole right in the center. Get it in there. And so, what that's going to do is basically like threading a needle. It's a little eyelet. We just created a little eyelet, right? So that allows me to take my wiring that I just sh stripped back from the power, and I'm going to thread in my cable. I'm going to take my positive, my red, put it through the eyelet. Now, I know some people are going to object to this, but I've seen it, and it works and I'm going to trust that I'm going to use what I have and integrate it with the uh, tools that I'm able to access. So I'm going to then do it through the eye, I'm going to twist it around. So I'm going to twist it around that exposed wire on the existing positive side of the circuit. Now you'll see that's tight, that's a really tight connection. Now I wouldn't recommend leaving it like this, you'll want to put some high-end electrical tape, not the cheap stuff. Uh, and so that you can just cover this circuit up, protect this. Um, you know, it's not ideal to have this exposed. If it is, it's not the end of the world, but I would recommend you tape that up. Now, what we're gonna do as well is we're gonna do the negative on the same thing. And open it up, expose that wire. And we're gonna hope this works. <laughs> now, I'm just gonna use this to actually open the eyelet. It's nothing else. Something about right in the middle. Try to try to get it in the middle so you can get a good tie and connection. Now, so I've got that eyelid opened. Should be enough to now thread in the negative of our cable, and we're going to wrap it around just like we did on the first one. So we put electrical tape on the wire and we're going to test to see if this works. Uh, and I'm thinking it will. It's 12 volt. should be. You know, it says, it's, it says it works off 12 volt power, so. Well, it turned red. I wonder what that means. Ooh. Well, this seems to be like it works. Looks like I can get to my menu just fine. I can, uh, you know, navigate as if you would from any other power source if you were in a car jack. So, I think I did it right. And, uh, you know, just follow that along. If you have a circuit that's already, in a, you know, any DC circuit really, and you want to tie into an existing DC circuit, that's a, an easy way to do it. And uh, it'll allow you to utilize wires you already have. If, for example, you don't have a car jack, which would probably be the simpler way, uh, we just didn't want to utilize a, a port for that, um, and this seemed to be the better alternative. So we're going to go ahead and actually get this mounted up here so that we have it on our spot that we want it when we're driving. So one of the things I actually like about what, what it came with, it comes with a couple different mounting types. Um, 
this is a use support bracket. If you wanted to, you could pin these down to something, you know, or whatever surface you're going to attach it to and hook it up to the camera. I'm going to do it a little bit easier way, um, and I'm going to use the other bracket it came with, and this is that center mount bracket. And it has a 3M tape attachment, which I actually like because I don't want to drill into the uh, into the surface I mount this to. And I already put the sunshade on, as you can see on the monitor. It's easy snap in, it's really quick. Um, and you'll see this little groove back here. I'm going to take that and install that into that little groove. I'm going to tighten it up. And that should give me a good support. Um, so, like so. Uh, get the surface nice and clean so that my 3M tape will stick really well, and that's as simple as that. So I'm going to go ahead and just install the antenna now for the monitor, and it's going to be out, you know, we'll just keep it out of the way for the minute. I'm going to take off the 3M off the center mount that came with it, so this actually comes attached to the mount, which is really nice, because this is actually plastic, so I won't be able to really drill with the other with the other mount that it came with into a solid surface, and so this 3M tape is going to be uh, the best bet. Unfortunately, I'm having trouble taking it off. All right, so there is still two options. It's actually four inserts in here, five, to additionally put secure screws in it if you wanted to add those. However, I'm just going to go ahead and stick it right here. Sit kind of like I'm sitting on. I'm driving, just like that. Get a nice pressure attachment, and then I'll plug it in. And uh, this is about it for the monitor part. So our next step is to pair the camera. Now, to pair the camera, the camera has to be powered on. I initially believed that we could power the camera based with the with the pairing cable from the monitor. That's not the case. You have to have power to the camera, whether that's a temporary DC source or your permanent source. In order to pair it, we still have to have it connected to its power source. We're going to use the power source that's actually going to be the permanent power source and then use our extension cable to bring it closer to the monitor so we can pair it. And then this is already actually how it comes. This is the positive and negative of our camera power supply. And we're going to tie this, just like we did the front, with the car jack into an existing DC source, like a light in the back. So today I'm going to be installing the backup camera portion of the backup system. And I'm going to be installing it using one of these lights. Now, which one? I don't think it really matters as long as you have a function to make sure it can turn it on via switch up front or it's always on depending on how you want it to run. I am personally going to have a switch with it that's going to allow me to turn it on and off. Now, I'd, I would like to have it always on as long as the bus is on, but I think the systems that I have back here they're going to be based on a switch system I have up front or the lighting system as I turn it on and off. So first things first, we're going to pull off this tail light. Uh, I have them just on the switch, so I have it running right now. Um, I'm going to just verify, just like we did yesterday with the camera up front or the monitor up front, I'm gonna verify with the multimeter which one's the positive, which one's the negative, so I make sure I don't wire them reverse polarity. I just want to state I am not an electrician, and uh, this may be slightly incorrect, slightly out of code, um, but this is a do-it-yourself way that I think I could get this to, uh, this camera to work without running new wires on the roof and tying it into a new power in my DC panel on the front of the bus. So, you know, all you know, all things considered, I think I'm going to do it in a safe way, and um, you know, that'll allow me to utilize my camera when I want to use it. Okay, I'm going to test which ones I believe are the ground. Now I just dropped a screw and let it find it. Um, so right here it actually already has you know some uh, indication of what the wires are on the back of the tail light. Now there's a ground, there's a stop, and there's a tail. So I'm going to do it to the tail and I'm going to test, or actually I'm going to do it to whatever I can do it to that has just a constant power source to it. Now I'm going to test which lines feed what. Determine which, hang that right there, is my positive and negative. 
Now, I'm gonna get this out of the way for now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie into and splice into this just like I did with the monitor. All right, so they come with, it already comes with the um, positive and negative exposed on the power source of the tail, or of the uh, camera uh, of the system. Now, a lot of people I know that, you know, have RVs, they have options to tie it into these little lights up on the top. And, um, or they could take off the camera that came with it if they're upgrading and easily swap this out. Now, in my case, we never had that. So um, I really don't want to damage any of these connectors. Um, who knows if they're hard or easy to get. I'm assuming it's something easy. I'm not an electrician. I just did, you know, what I could do to get the bus, you know, fully wired and, and all of that. But when it comes down to the science behind it, I understand the basics. So we're going to connect the camera to the power to test it and to pair it, just to make sure it all powers up and works well. Um, they do have a splitter here, and that splitter is meant to plug into that extension cable that's on the other side of this, is the transmitter that I've already plugged in. And I'll run that up to the front of the bus to get closer to the monitor. Now, pretty easy to plug these in. Um, you can't really go wrong. They're a seven pin, it looks like a seven pin plug. And then I'm gonna tighten those up. Now what I do like is they come with, it looks like a, about a weather shield or some sort of protecting um, cover. I do like that to manage any water or debris that would get into that connection. And especially if you run these outside, I, I believe they are safe to run outside. They cover up that connection really nice. Um, so then I'm going to connect this camera to the power side, or excuse me, to the connection on, on this side of the splitter. And then I'm going to connect the power obviously to the power connection. I'm gonna plug, go ahead and plug it into my power source, which is currently off. And it has a nice little twist attachment here, which is pretty cool. It does have a nice strong attachment, so now it's locked. Um, and this will be inside of this, so I don't have to worry about too much about this being weather protected, but I wish this had a sleeve as well. So um, now, moment of truth, I'm gonna go up and test the monitor, turn on the power, and see if we actually can see the camera through the monitor. I'm just gonna put it back here somewhere. Um, and if it does work, I'm gonna go ahead and then permanently mount it where I want it to go. We have the transmitter, and this is way up here because of this extension cable, this 39 foot cable. I'm probably not gonna use this for that. I'm just gonna leave it back there. But for now, to show you, uh, I'm gonna try to turn it on. This power source should come on as I switch my light on. All right, so that's good news. Looks like it's doing right. And now I'm gonna turn my monitor on. And darn, it's already paired. That's really cool. So we didn't have to even hit it. See, the pairing cable that came, comes with the system, I'm not sure how that all ties in. Maybe it has to do with accessories or side cameras or another type of wired system. I don't know. So the next test I'm gonna do is run this to the back. If it still talks to each other, I know that it's transmitting well. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn off the system and then mount my camera permanently. So I'm gonna take this into the back and see if it still transmits to the screen. And then if it does, we'll know it works really well. So the really cool thing about it, you can hear who's ever back there where you can listen to directions guiding. So it's a pretty neat feature of it, so they can kind of guide you if you are, do have a blind spot or something that you need to be aware of. Uh, they do have a built-in speaker function to the camera, so that's pretty neat. So here's what it looks like when it's finished. We ended up doing one new penetration out of the bus here, which I will end up siliconing or doing some sealant work. Uh, that's tied to our power and it goes up. I was going to chase it through here, but I don't know exactly what's in there. So instead of trying to mess with that, we want on the outside and it actually comes with these clips and these uh, attachments to uh, tie the wire down on the outside, which is really neat. Then we're going to go up and over. We have the receiver as well as the camera. So that's the final look. So the camera's working really well right now. It's got 
decent reception. I'm going to adjust the antennas, but it's keeping up. Um, I'm at about 40 miles an hour going forward. So I can see about 20 feet behind me. Very clear picture. Um, obviously, I'm going to adjust the, the height, or I can adjust the camera angle if I want to see a little bit further back. Uh, however, it's really good for backing up as well. The lanes are staying within the lanes that I'm driving in, so it's nice to have it centered in the back of the bus uh, because it reflects the lanes. But overall, very impressed with the quality of the camera. We have it in reverse right now. We're pretty close to a wall behind us. Um, the yellow lines, I would say it's about four to six feet. Uh, this is probably within two to four feet, um, and then etc. So it is pretty nice to have, very clear picture of what's behind us. Um, I can get a couple feet closer, and you know, I, I am very confident, a lot more confident now than I was, because I have such a clear view of what's behind me. So really happy with how it's turning out.